at number 10, we have this tie dye dream. This family not only makes this list for the sheer awkwardness of this situation, but they also win the award for the most horrifyingly coordinated family in the world. I can't tell whether it's Christmas or whether this kid simply wants to express some individuality. I'm also not 100% understanding the family dynamic here either. Also, I want to be able to read what's embroidered on their shirts, but I can't quite. I think it says we be mummy, which actually is awkward in a whole new kind of place. Number nine, the Morgans. The Morgans sound like the family that lives next door who outdo everyone when it comes to like holiday decorations, but I'm talking about the JP Morgans who could probably do that and control the world at the same time. The Morgan family is one of the most influential American families. Their dynasty is tied to banking, and you have probably heard the name JP Morgan over like a hundred times in passing. At the turn of the century, Morgan was the most influential businessman in America. He was so admired and respected that on the day of his funeral, the stock exchange remained closed until 12 p.m. To give you an idea about how much financial success he attained, he bailed out the US Treasury. Twice. His ability to do this no doubt caused great uneasiness among other people and resulted in the development of the reserve system in late 1913. Today, the Morgans still maintain their political and financial influence, not just in the US, but also in Europe, as their company is there as well. So, world connections. Number eight, Pritzer. Arriving from Ukraine late in the 19th century, the Pritzer family made everyone believe that the American dream could be reality. 50 years into their journey as entrepreneurs, they finally started to invest in real estate. That one decision led to over 900 hotels the family owns today, plus an airline and a cruise line just for like extra pizzazz. Ever heard of the Hyatts? That's them. Like many on this list, they are not without shares in different financial institutions, amplifying their influence. After all, if you got your hands on someone else's money, well, you can pretty much do what you want. JB Pritzer was the governor of Illinois in 2019, so there's the political influence, and his sister Penny worked as the Secretary of Commerce in the Obama administration. Administration. So not only are they the ninth on the Forbes list of richest families, their political influence is even more obvious. Their net worth is over $32.5 billion, which they use to back the presidential campaigns of Obama and Hillary Clinton. An astounding, astounding amount of wealth, which of course has been met with competition and strife. Liesl Pritzer Simmons, once a child actress known for Little Princess, didn't know this, now a prominent impact investor, actually sued her own father along with her entire family in 2000. Her father and cousins looted her and her brother's trust funds, so she filed a $6 billion lawsuit, settling with $500 million plus $280 million in cash plus more control over her trust valued at $170 million. So not quite the $6 billion she wanted, but still, <laughs> no complaints, I would hope. No complaints. Number seven, the House of Windsor. Whether you consider them the figureheads of the monarchy, the House of Windsor remains one of the most powerful families in the world. They are the reigning family monarchy in Great Britain, and although they may not be the richest on this list, their wealth does not simply lie in money. The Windsors reigned over the entire British Empire, which of course included the fruits of the colonial pursuits of jolly old England from years past. Their colonies, protectorates, and dominions spread across the world. They were also recognized as the official monarchy of several independent countries. Therefore, their wealth is in many pies, as it were. Along with the fanfare that follows, people are obsessed with them. Like the whole Meghan Markle thing. It's nuts. Queen Elizabeth II is the head of the family, the church, and the commander in chief of Great Britain's military troops, along with performing her duties as supreme ruler of 15 autonomous countries. Fun fact um, this is a fun fact. My grandparents met her twice at the Queen's Garden Party, and they said hi, and she's very queenly, and that was all I really found out about that. But that was cool. Number six, Rockefeller. John Davidson Rockefeller may have picked up a few tricks from his dad when he started his American empire. Son of a con man, Rockefeller bought out several owners of Cleveland's largest oil refinery in 1865. Then he just, he just kept going. Buying out competitors left, right, and center, which led him to take over 90% of America's refineries and pipelines. But beneath Beneath all that success were dubious dealings with corporate spies, secret railroad deals, bribery, leading the US attorney to sue a Standard Oil after this came to light. However, the trial only resulted in the company breaking off into 34 sub companies and allowed Rockefeller to maintain ownership. By the time John D died, his assets equaled out to 1.5% of America's total economic output. That's more than anybody has ever made today. Today, the 200 descendants of the Rockefeller family have a 
net worth of over 11 billion, which is significantly less than what they had before. Though their considerable wealth is not what it once was, their name still carries immense weight to this day. John's grandson, David Rockefeller, is the man who stirred up rumors of conspiracy in the 1950s due to his highly secretive meetings. His enigmatic behavior added to fuel to the fire towards the suspicion that the Rockefeller family seeks to gain or maintain control of the world. Number five, the House of Sod. I feel like if you even have your baby toe dipped in oil somewhere in the world, in a metaphorical sense, of course, you can control the world. It's just, it's it's the most important thing. We use it all the time. The House of Zod is the royal family of Saudi Arabia. They, like many powerful families on this list, have old money. Especially since they are descendants of the founder of the first Saudi state. The king of Saudi Arabia reigns with absolute power, meaning he could make anything he want happen at the snap of his fingers. They could start a war if they wanted to, and that they have. They consider the country to be an asset, especially since they reign on precious crude oil reserves about 20% of the world's global resources. The entire House of Saud has 15,000 members, so to be clear, we are specifically talking about the 2,000 members of the inner circle. The actual family under the king of Saudi Arabia can get any job they want, so long as it's in the country. Number four, the Bush family. Yep, we mean that one. Of course, you would expect the families on this list to have political connections. Otherwise, how else would you rule the world? Their family has made it into the political offices for over 70 years, with good old G.W. Bush being the 43rd president. But of course, we must discuss a pretty seedy scandal. Documents finally declassified in 2003 revealed that Prescott Sheldon Bush had dealings with the German army during World War II. The Guardian reported in 2004 that Prescott worked for and profited from companies closely involved with the German businesses that finance the man who rhymes with Mittler's rise to power. Meaning he could have been prosecuted for providing air and comfort to the enemy that killed millions of innocents. Additionally, ad this is crazy. Additionally, he continued his support after it was revealed what the Yahtzees were doing. And you know what I mean by Yahtzees, I just can't say it because YouTube, censorship. Ugh, I hate it. But anyways, the documents even imply that the US knew where the camps were and could have disabled them long before they were finally discovered. Number three, Rothschild. The conspiracy surrounding this family appeared to me never ending and some of them may be right. After all, the possibilities are endless when you carry that much influence in your wallet. The Rothschilds are one of the most wealthy families in the world and their legacy goes all the way back to the 17th century. That is the oldest money I think we have on this list. Mayor Amschel Rothschild established a banking business back then and became the personal banker for the German royal families. His five sons then took the business and expanded it into London, Paris, Frankfurt, Vienna and Naples. British and French war efforts have relied on their funding, including the Napoleonic Wars in 1803 to 1815. This family literally had a hand in the success of war. If that's not power, then I don't know what is. Though their business remains in control of banking, they also have hands in real estate, oil, and construction. So basically, everything around us. Number two, the Murdochs. No, I'm not talking about the Canadian classic everybody watches on a Sunday that's been running forever, Murdoch Mysteries. How are ya? But same name. To say the media plays a huge role in every part of our lives is an understatement even to say that. It's at the rate we consume media on our phones, on the subway, on the street, TV, computer, on headphones, you'd have to head to the Alaskan Triangle just to get away from it. Which is why the Murdochs are so damn powerful. The Murdochs control several broadcasting networks, their reach stretching across three continents. So needless to say, their influence has very little borders. Their imperialism began in Australia by a political reporter for the Melbourne papers, Keith Murdoch. Keith climbed his way up to editor and after he figured out how to double the sales, he became CEO. His son Robert followed in his footsteps as a reporter and together they formed the News Corporation which held the power of Australia's media in the palm of their hands. But the corporation now owns 20th Century Fox, Fox News, MySpace and Dow Jones plus I think a few more. However, there is no fame without scandal. In 2011, the News Corp was prosecuted for illegal legal phone tapping of celebrities, the royal family, and even bribe police and special units. People thought that maybe, I don't know, like maybe this should topple the entire empire, but it didn't. It remains standing and who knows what's happening behind the scenes. And last but not least, number one, the Waltons. And hitting in at number one on the Forbes list of America's richest families, we have the Waltons. Their net worth being $247 billion. 
dollars. Fun fact, if you were to start counting to a billion today, it would take you 30 years to complete. So imagine counting to 247 billion dollars. Somebody do the math for me down below in the comments. Guess what they own? Walmart, which is the world's largest retailer by sales. However, they also own Arvis Bank, banks, right? Which operates 16 banks in Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas. An unfathomable amount of wealth that this family hoards, and it looks like they want to keep it that way. The Waltons have played a lead role in eliminating the federal estate tax, which would essentially help billionaires evade estate tax entirely, right? Their influence also carries over easily into politics, considering the average election campaign costs $10 million. The Waltons could easily make that in under a day on their business earnings alone. According to Bloomberg, they can make around $100 million a day. Who do you think gets to dictate the terms when your candidate needs money. On top of that though, they also donate a lot of money towards education and environmental initiatives and of course have their grand share of vintage cars, art and properties. Apparently it still sucks to work at Walmart though. So Starting off at number 10 now we have the Grand Dragon. This one comes from Betamax V2 who said, A great uncle of mine passed away when I was a little boy. The family met at his house after the funeral to start packing things up and all as he had no children and his wife died many years before him. My great uncle was a highly respected member of his small town. He was a banker of some sort, deacon in the church, and all those things that made him a good person. Well, tucked away in the attic, not covered by any dust mind you, was a large wooden trunk. Inside this trunk were the purple robes of a KKK grand dragon, various member listings, meeting notes, and all other sorts of things related to the KKK. Turns out that my great uncle was a very active, although very much secretive, member of the regional chapter of the KKK. Okay, I think uh, we've already started up here with this video. Can you guys even imagine finding out that your relative, someone who was respected and loved by his family and friends, was a member of the KKK? Probably the most famous white supremacy group of all time. I guess you'd have a lot of questions after that, especially for your family. Like, how didn't they know? Coming in at number nine, we have this family who look like they may or may not have contracted the plague. Why are they so purple? I'm really confused. Absolutely nobody in this family picture wants to be here. No one. The two boys look like they're suffering a high fever and they're about to vomit, and the grandma looks like she's just seen Phil Mitchell resurface at the old Vic and she's about to go give him a piece of her mind. And she's taking the baby for backup. Ah, and then we have the mum who's looking sideways into an alternative reality where she just doesn't have to deal with this kind of BS. Okay, coming into number eight, I kind of have no idea what to say about whatever the F is happening in these two family portraits other than, no, I, I still have nothing to say. What is going on? I really am out of words. I guess these two ethereal godlike dudes take their job as head of the family very seriously. They really do embody the white middle class male of the 1980s. What a golden era. Also, why so serious? Here we are at number seven and things are getting pretty naked. Nudity can be great, but around your family, I mean, it's just all kinds of mentally scarring. Does anyone actually have any idea what the dynamic is here. Having your breasts cupped by one man whilst another holds your naked, bulging, pregnant belly, I mean, I've got some questions. Who does this baby belong to? I'm with the kid in his toy turkey. I just want to stay well away from this one. More nudity coming in at number six. Hip hip hooray. Mummy, why isn't daddy in the photo? Oh, well he will be in a minute. Just keep, you know, looking forward. Like at what point does dad need to adopt the naked man pose? Without this Rudy nudity in the background, I'm thinking this probably could have been a nice picture, but dad, put it away. Coming into number five, we have a full on back tattoo. This dude could pose for a family portrait all by himself as he has the faces of his wife and two kids tattooed to scale on his back. Wow. Better not have any more kids though as I don't think there's actually any space for them to join in the ink portrait. So I'm guessing that that's Lisa at the back and then Zadie on the right and um, little Nutella on the left? I wonder if they all have a huge tattoo of him on their back in return. This is so creepy. At number four, we have a pretty awkward PDA. Grandma, grandpa, can you just like stop it? As if putting these matching outfits on weren't embarrassing enough, we have to deal with grandpa's weird pensioner leg flexibility and the full on pash happening with grandma. A 
family who have clearly been taking fashion tips from our family at number four, coming in at number three, we have a serious dose of double denim. Only in North America do we see this kind of scene. So many questions. Why the Canadian tuxedo? And why is everyone bundling on dad? How is he not getting crushed by his four fully grown kids? This picture, seriously. I have to say though, wherever they are, it looks amazing. Coming in at number two, we have a family that clearly took inspiration from our family before, but took it to a whole new extra level. Hello, Rainbow Family. This picture actually gets more awkward from the bottom up. Like, okay, the kid in the purple looks pretty cute and is definitely having fun. Then the kid in the blue is still kind of down with it all, but the kid in the green is closing her eyes and just wishing that they could be uninvited from their own family life. Then at the very top, what is happening with the dad? This is a whole new level of nope. But it does make me chuckle. Finally, coming in at number one, this family certainly wants you to be their guest. Yes, yes, they do. The low budget beast costume is killing me. I love it. It's so good. Those fangs, like, what? Also, the mum is Mrs. Potts and one of the kids is Belle. Like, what kind of twisted family is this? You know, Beast and Belle are like together, right? I am all about the Lumiere pose. I'm thinking that this person is like a zany aunt, the person who probably came up with this whole concept in the first place. Then we have Cogsworth and Chip, and like, they're kind of cute. I would say overall, A for effort, A++++ for cringe. Number 10. The Mars family. I want candy. You want candy. We all want candy. The Mars family owns Mars Inc., which is, and you guessed it, the Mars Bar Company. They are one of the world's largest candy and pet food companies, right? Like, what? Like, how do those go together? You know? Kind of weird. The family themselves come from humble beginnings. Frank Mars started Mars Inc. way back in 1911 when he started selling candy from his kitchen in Tacoma, Washington. The malt flavored nougat we all know and love wasn't actually made until 1929. When they they came up with the Milky Way. How exactly they made the transition from candy to pet food is like beyond me, but that aspect of the biz expanded in 2017. They acquired the Animal Hospital Company VCA, making a $9 billion investment. Overall, the company is worth, get ready, $40 billion in sales. What? So they're rich and they own candy. Well, okay, they're really rich and they own candy. For one, they can influence anyone. And consider the fact that sugar is considered an addictive substance. And then also, Willy Wonka, right? Fiction or nonfiction, candy is a big deal. Imagine a world without it. Moving on to number nine now, we have the milk. This one comes from Klein Boy, 1987. Now he said, My great grandfather hit his wife with a fire poker and slit her throat. He then proceeded to blow his head apart with a shotgun. He sat down in a rocking chair and used his cane to push the trigger, all over an argument of whether it was too cold for me to walk to the grocery store to get some milk. That's it. That's the whole story. That's everything. There's nothing more to help us try and wrap our heads around what happened here. The couple were arguing over whether this storyteller would be alright getting milk due to the cold, and he murdered her over it and then killed himself. Now I'm guessing by the fact that they're referred to as great grandparents, that they were pretty old when this happened. What would cause someone who's been in a marriage for decades and decades to just suddenly snap like that? I think there's more to this story, but honestly, I'm not even sure I want to know. At the number eight spot now, we have Dog Heaven. This story comes from New Arpheus about his wife. He said, My wife and I were reminiscing about our childhood pets one day. When I shared how hard it was when my cherished dog had to be put down, she got to thinking. All of her childhood dogs were killed by semis. Now, normally, the thought of a dog getting loose and being run over by a semi truck isn't that far fetched. However, it had just clicked with her that her childhood home was in the countryside, down a long gravel road. The nearest highway was really far away. She decided that the next time she talked to her dad, she would find out what really happened. After all, now she is an adult and can handle the truth that a seven-year-old couldn't. Well, her dad just sort of smiled at her and said, Oh honey, I never lied to you. Your childhood dogs were indeed hit by a semi. A semi-automatic. Yeah, a semi-automatic rifle. Now, to be fair here, it sounds like her dad was putting down the dogs when they were old or very sick instead of taking them to the vet to do it. I hear that's more common in certain rural communities around the world. I'm passing no judgment here. I just thought it would be a shocking story because she genuinely thought they were all getting hit by semis, as in semi trucks, when it was actually semi automatic rifles. It's quite a big difference between those two things. Next up at number seven now, guys, we have the judge. This one comes from Things, Things, 
Ming's Thing, who said, The real reason my aunt moved back to my hometown was she was briefly kidnapped by some bad guys she displeased in her work as a judge. The guy held her at gunpoint and told her she could either leave town in the next 24 hours or be taken back in. I was like eight at the time, so everyone just told me she moved back because she missed us all. I found out about it when my brother and I were rehashing old stuff 10 years later. Now, I'm sure all the adults in this family had mixed feelings about the auntie returning. Yay, auntie's back in town for good because she misses us, but oh no, it's actually because she was told to leave at gunpoint where she worked as a judge. That's really scary. It's also kind of scary to think that some criminals can subvert justice like that. Maybe you guys think this is exceptionally rare though. I hope it is. Moving on to number six now, guys, we have the other child. This one comes from Egg Coroner, who said, I just found out that my grandparents wanted more kids, but were having trouble getting pregnant for a second time. They adopted a toddler aged brother and sister when my mother was seven. Soon after, my grandmother got pregnant. The girl then died from a very mysterious fall down the stairs, and the boy was quietly given to another family. They never, ever spoke of either child from that that day forward. I thought she was pulling my leg, but a quick search turned up the girl's death record. I was never close to that grandmother and can't help but think back to every weird aspect of that woman and all the strange relationships she had with her family. Wow. That one is really crazy. I think what the storyteller is trying to suggest is that when the couple finally did get pregnant, they then didn't want their adopted children anymore. And so they staged a fatal accident for the girl and just sent the boy away forever. That is really dark. I presume that it was their mother who told them this story and they thought, there's no way that's true. You must be pulling my leg. But yeah, I don't know, man. I've never heard a good joke that sounds anything like this. Coming in at number five now, we have the photos. Conte Vincero said, we found a picture of two great aunts arm in arm with Hitler. We also found a signed photograph of Mussolini. Yeah. Their great aunts were apparently best mates with Hitler. What an awful surprise to find out. I mean, the scary thing about this story is pretty clear. I guess the only positive to take away from it is that maybe their grandmother wasn't all chummy with Hitler. Maybe it was just uh, two sisters clutching at straws here, I think. As for the signed picture of Mussolini, I think they should sell it and give the money to a nice charity. That's something that would have really annoyed him. At the number four spot now, we have life insurance. This one comes from Cotton Weasel, who said, I have a second cousin that murdered his siblings and parents for insurance money. He didn't get away with it, but only spent around 20 years in prison. He's out now, but no one talks about him or will speak to him. The only reason I even know is my parents warn me if he ever reaches out to me that I shouldn't talk to him. I managed to find out about him and what happened by Googling him. Unreal. I mean, for me personally, unless something awful has happened, there should never be a good reason to kill your parents and siblings. I actually can't think of any reason off the top of my head. That's pretty obvious for normal people, but to do it because of life insurance money, that's insane. I'm glad to hear that he got locked up, but yeah, I do think 20 years might not be enough for slaughtering a whole family in cold blood. Someone in the comments section of this story replied by saying, if he does contact you, the first thing you tell them is, I don't have have any life insurance. That's some, uh, that's some good, but also quite dark, humorous advice there. Moving on to the number three spot now, guys, we have the uncle. This one comes from Dogma3721, who said, an uncle I've never met, my mom's brother, killed my mom's parents when he was 16 in a fit of rage and burnt down their home in an attempt to cover it up. I've never met him, as he has been in jail on a life sentence since before I was born. I was only informed of his existence because my dad was blackmailing my mom with this. I mean, aside from it being scary, this story is just tragic. It's tragic enough to know that your grandparents were murdered and you never got to meet them, especially when you find out that it was your own uncle who did it. I bet it's even more horrifying for the storyteller's mum, especially now that the dad is apparently blackmailing her with this. I mean, that's a pretty scummy thing to do, as if she hasn't already been through enough in her life. Sorry, this is uh, supposed to be a scary video, and now I'm just angrily ranting about things. At the number two spot now, we have the past life. This is just strange on every level. See if you can follow along with it. Someone on Reddit said, in 1976, my father was in the military and traveled to Guatemala after an earthquake. During the cleanup, he was at 
the Mayan site of Mixco Viejo. There were several burial sites overturned there. For some reason, unknown to me, he brought back the remains of a female Mayan Indian. He claimed to have loved her in a past life. These remains are still in the box in our attic. They are mostly dust now with a part of the skull left. My father died in 1986 so I cannot ask him about it. My mother and sisters claimed her ghost followed them wherever they moved until my dad died. I am skeptical of that claim. I also have a half brother in Puerto Rico who is in his 30s that I will never meet. I only know his name is Ricky and my dad had a fling with a Puerto Rican woman while stationed there in the army sometime in the 70s. Okay, breathe. There's a lot to break down there. I think taking the remains of a stranger from their homeland is very strange as it is, probably illegal too, but his family didn't even do anything when he came back with that. I know they said they didn't know, but now they do, and the remains are apparently still just sitting there in the attic. Weird. As for the last bit of the story, someone else pointed out that pop star Ricky Martin was born in Puerto Rico in the 1970s. Could it be him? And finally, number one now, we have Chucky. Disclaimer for this one, guys, this is pretty disturbing. Beastie J said, my mother told me a story about being at a small funeral in the late 1950s in East Texas. The deceased was mentally challenged, and the family was relieved to have the child at peace. During the service, the coffin began to rock, and crying was heard. Then, she was taken outside and watched as the coffin was carried to the cemetery next to the church and hurriedly buried. I was telling my kids this story story years later and my mother walked into the room, listened for a moment and asked, are you telling them about Uncle Chucky? Okay, I honestly didn't even know whether or not to include this. I was back and forth for about 10 minutes. It's horrifying. I'm really hoping this story isn't actually real. I'm hoping it's very exaggerated or maybe their mother was just messing around with them. This is really shocking stuff. Did this family really bury their mentally challenged son alive? Personally, I don't think so. I think even with the different attitudes of the 1950s, this is still the stuff of horror and fiction rather than real life and fact. <music>